I got a question on one of my other videos from Valerie who wrote, in my project we aren't using a toolbar that stays up on all slides. We need to show the audio toggle on all slides. I figured no problem and pasted my button in the upper right hand corner of each slide, but my boss noticed that the toggle state doesn't stick because the button is essentially 48 different objects. Solutions? Well, Valerie, I certainly do have a solution for you. This actually reminded me of a course I designed and developed for one of the international airports here in Canada. And uh, I decided to go with my own custom play bar as well. I'm going to use the space that you can see down at the bottom of my screen here, this blue area here, to contain all the different controls that I want to display. And the advantage of doing so is that you can control them and decide how they function yourself. So what I've done is I've temporarily hidden that object. You can see that there is no play bar control on all subsequent slides here. But let's turn that object on. I'm going to talk a little bit about how it works. So you can see here, there's my navigation controls. Now, the ideas behind this video don't work if you're using traditional Adobe Captivate style buttons. But if you're using smart shapes used as buttons or images used as buttons, this solution totally works. Let's click on the grouped object and then click a second time to select my audio button here. And let's take a look at property. So I've set up a, a multi-state object. So in this case here, I have a normal state, which means that the audio is currently turned on. I have a rollover state where it turns white. It essentially highlights the button. When you press it, it kind of gets really dark. And if it's in the muted state, if you will, uh, it's going to stay dark. In other words, the audio isn't turned on. It's the same icon in all cases, though. Let's exit from here, and I'll show you how the advanced action works. So when you go into advanced actions for that audio mute button, it runs a script called audio mute. In this case here, let's take a closer look at the advanced action. So there's a system variable in Adobe Captivate called CP command mute. Whether it has a value of zero or one will determine whether the audio is on or off. In this case here, if CP command mute is equal to zero, the audio will be on. So if that's the case, what it's going to do is it's going to do two things. It's going to assign a value of one to CP command mute, essentially muting your sound. But I'm also going to change the state of that multi-state button to its muted condition. So it's going to look darker than it normally would. Under the else section, you'll see I do the opposite. So in this case here, again, it's a true toggle. I'm going to assign the value of CP command mute with zero once again. So essentially the audio will now be turned on and the button will return to its normal state. So it should work quite nicely here. Let me hit close. And what we're going to do at this point here is I'm going to show you how this works across all slides. You'll notice that still it's, you know, if you just look at the thumbnails here, you, you don't see it on those thumbnails. But if I go to the actual group object itself, uh, and the reason I did this to make it easy to work with as a single thing. Uh, if you go to the timing panel, you'll notice that instead of displaying for the rest of the slide, I have it displaying for the rest of the project. So it shows up on slide, in this case three, and you'll see it for the rest of the project. Same set of buttons across the entire course. The other thing you might want to do is make sure to place the object on top so that nothing on the other slides are going to block these individual items. When I run my advanced action and I change the appearance of the button through the advanced action, it doesn't matter what slide I'm on. It's changing it back on slide three, even if I'm on slide 40. Let's do a little preview of the project here. Okay, so here's the intro screen. This course uses sound. So there we are. Here's my course instruction voice. slide and you we've got rollovers and all this stuff. And all of these have nice little you. rollovers on the buttons. And I can go ahead and mute the sound, which turns off. It kind of like it, it's not being lit up and we won't hear any audio. And if I go on to the next slide and the next slide, 
and the slide after that and so on it doesn't matter the mute button will stay muted and of course i can turn it back on at any time and return my audio back to normal of course once you've published your project don't forget you can send it out to your stakeholders and subject matter experts using review my e-learning you can capture feedback from multiple reviewers and see it all in the same place reviewers can even see each other's comments and you know exactly what slide in your course that feedback is for. Try out Review My eLearning for free by using the link in the description of this video so they know I sent you. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next eLearning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective eLearning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.